everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Public Opinion Show with your host, Pam. And also, Vanetta is back with me again. And this is actually kind of part two of my election series because I wanted to follow up the last show. We were just talking about the importance of voting, giving you all some information that you needed to know, making sure that you had a voting plan. Yes. And now, now this week, we are going to really be talking about how do you maintain your mental health during this whole election cycle? So I don't know about you, Vanetta, but I've just been feeling like very anxious, sometimes stressful. And very sensitive, like a pins and yeah. needles kind of thing. Yes. Uh, and I am extremely stressed when people start talking politics in my presence. Oh, my goodness. And because their attitudes are so extreme mm -hmm. one way or the other. And it, it is just mind boggling to me that we're in an election cycle that is so close. Oh, right. And it's so close and it's it's just causing so much animosity. Oh, it is. There, I mean, it's it's to me like nothing I have ever experienced before. Well, I'm not going to I'm going to disagree with you about that. The last cycle with this repeat candidate was contentious. But I, I think and it's ugly. even I think it's even worse. I think it's even worse only because of what happened after the last okay. election and the fact that we are here where we are now. So anyway, um, that's what we're going to be addressing. Um, Vanetta, I want you to hang on and listen because I'm going to have you back on here so that we can just talk briefly about sure. what the guests had My to honor. say. <laughs> but um, you just make sure that you maintain your mental health during all of I'm this. I'm going to do my very best. All right. Thank so, you. So we're going to uh, get started and um, meet our guests for this week. First, we have Tamika Taylor. Tamika is the president of Compass Consulting Services, LLC. She facilitates discussions on diversity issues such as race, religion, social economics, and physical ability for youth and adults. Other areas of her ex expertise are communication, team building, anti-bullying, facilitation skills, conflict management, and community engagement. She serves several boards and has been recognized as a Cleveland 500 top influencer several times. Next, we have Dr. Natalie Whitlow. Dr. Whitlow is a dynamic psychologist licensed in the state of Ohio who provides life-changing and community-impacting services through her private practice, Our Village, a service organization, LLC. Her mission is to help people think about mental health differently, progressively, in order to minimize mental health stigma, intimidation, and fear, and to help people understand the function that mental health plays in their very own lives and how to attain and maintain optimal mental health. All right, so let's welcome our guests. Thank you so much. Oh, for welcome. That, well, thank you so much for being on again. And thank you, Tamika, for agreeing to be on the show as well. And I'm I excited. am actually, yeah, I'm looking forward to this discussion um, about uh, maintaining your mental health. And, and of course, I'm going to read the public opinion question of the week because that's, you know, what we do on this show. Mm -hmm. So the public opinion question for this week is what are the best strategies for maintaining our mental health during this contentious voting cycle? So, uh, Tamika, I'm going to actually let you go ahead and answer that. First, I'm going to give you just a couple of minutes to answer. Go ahead. So while some people would rather go have a root canal or go crawl <laughs> up under a rock, those are not the best strategies to use when looking at and thinking about these issues. Um, and it does. You guys talked in the beginning um, as we were offline about being anxious and just the, the things that come along with just this time of year, this time of cycle um, that puts a lot of people on, on edge and walking on eggshells and, and really, in some cases, not wanting to engage with others at all. Mm -hmm. So some of the strategies that... Um, I find and I think that people find that are helpful is coming from a place of curiosity. So I usually don't ask why questions because why questions make the walls go up 
And then it makes it worse in terms of being able, puts people on guard. And so um, I usually come from a place of curiosity and say, I'm curious as to what makes you come to this conclusion um, so that I'm putting it back on me. Or I'll say, help me to understand where this is coming from, as you say that, where that statement is coming from. Because a lot of people will sh shoot things out as if they're facts, but they're really just mm -hmm. their opinion. Mm -hmm. And sometimes making people stop to think about that this is just their opinion and not a fact will help people to kind of sift through and kind of backpedal a little bit um, in that engagement and, and talking in that. Also, it's really important not to get emotionally hijacked. Um, mm. Our emotions is part of why we feel like we're walking on eggshells is because people get emotionally hijacked. The logic goes out the window, <laughs> um, you know, because political identity used to be who you voted for when you went into the ballot, when you went into mm -hmm. the, the voting booth. Well, now people are taking it on as their identity. I am a, and mm -hmm. it's very staunch and very, you know, just like I'm black, I'm 56, I'm this. I mean, that's that's how right. their political identity. And so, therefore, when we take on things as part of our identity, it becomes a part of us and causes mm -hmm. us to become very attached to it and causes the emotions to become attached to it. So really mm -hmm. paying attention to what are the things that trigger us as we think about it. Also, in entering these conversations, Let's think about the difference between debates, discussions, right. and dialogues. All and right. that we Some don't go we... into it with a debate, but we go into it hopefully with a dialogue because that debate, right. the, 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 there's, there's never going to be winners that's going to come out of it. And really yeah. often that debate will cause us to ruin relationships mm -hmm. where dialogues cause us to build relationships. Very Dialogues good. cause us to honor silence when there's silence and the person is thinking versus pouncing on somebody and thinking. Right. And so All right, Tamika, I'm going I'm to stop you there because I want you to continue that. But I want to give uh, uh, Dr. Whitlow a chance, uh, just a couple of minutes, and then we're going to come back and have a, a okay. more of a discussion about this. Okay. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Go ahead. Now talk about flowing. You were flowing okay, there. She yes. Was so you know, from my perspective, I think I have a little different twist. I want to offer a four step kind of model or approach to mm -hmm. managing your mental health. The first thing that I would say is we have to become aware of what mental health issues are being triggered mm -hmm. within us, mm -hmm. right? So we say, I want to keep my mental health together, but what is it about your mental health that's being triggered? So we've mm -hmm. heard the anxiety, we've mm -hmm. heard defensiveness, there's dissociation that happens where mm -hmm. people kind of get outside of their body mm -hmm. and don't want any part of it mm -hmm. at all, which causes you to feel disempowered. There is the fixated thoughts that we kind of mm -hmm. get caught in that causes us issues. There's guilt that we feel mm. about the fact that I'm closing my eyes and I'm not doing enough. And what if the candidate that I don't want gets into office? Mm. So we got to understand what mental health issues are actually being triggered. Mm. The second thing is to then understand what is this mental health issue and how does it manifest itself within me? Mm -hmm. And how is it impacting me? Mm -hmm. The third thing is to then identify what healthy guardrails can I put mm. in place to manage and protect myself? And these would be your typical lifestyle mm -hmm. activities, such as making sure your sleep hygiene is mm. on point, making sure that your diet is on mm. point so that your brain is able to get the regeneration of neurotransmitters mm -hmm. that it needs in order for you to be most mm -hmm. mentally healthy. And then the last thing that I would say is to then identify what are the unique strategies that you need to put in place in order to manage the unique stressors related to mm. this election. Very good. I like that. I like how you said you need to know what your triggers are. And um, and I like a lot of stuff that you said too, uh, Tamika. Um, the thing with me is I think I find myself like hyper fixating 
on reading, like watching the news and watching, C, you know, CNN or MSNBC, all of these networks. And I wake up in the morning looking at it's like I'm consumed by it. And mm -hmm. I don't I just want to. And I said, OK, that's the reason I wanted to have this show, because I said, if I'm feeling like this, I know other people mm -hmm. are probably feeling the same way. And Tamika, what would you say you should do as far as the feelings you feel for other people who may not share the same thoughts or, or beliefs that you do and feeling like you want to cut them off. I mean, what, how do you, how would you say you should approach that? Yeah. First of all, I think you have to evaluate what the stakes are with that relationship. Is this a high stake relationship? Is this a relationship mm -hmm. I even care about? Mm -hmm. Because if it's not a relationship I really care about, then you can just walk away from it or just cut that person off. And I'm not saying, so don't anybody say, Tamika say, just start cutting people <laughs> off. Um, but I think that what that relationship means helps to define if, if, if it's somebody we should be cutting off and, and not engaging with. Mm -hmm. But I think that we have to acknowledge that these relationships and that these stakes are high stakes and that these are very complex issues. And mm -hmm. sometimes that's our common ground because we, we want to, when we disagree with somebody, we often need to find a common ground so that we can even hear each other mm -hmm. at some level. And so sometimes acknowledging that these are complex issues is that common ground mm -hmm. that we need to find to be able to engage with one another based around mm -hmm. that. Um, because I think it is important to find what is it that we both can agree on. And, yeah. and some, sometimes it's hard to find something that we can agree on. And it might just be that we got to agree to disagree might be what we find yeah. that we agree on. Right. And, and Dr. Whitlow, what about you? What would you say to that? Well, I think that um, we far too often allow people and things in our space that disrupt us. Mm -hmm. And so I do think that when you have someone in your life and you all have opposing views, really looking at the foundational values that mm -hmm. you are opposed on and how much does it mean to you? Um, what impacts does having someone in your world whose value system is so mm -hmm. divergent? And then how are they displaying it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that is important because I think a lot of people um, stay heightened. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people stay on edge because there are unsafe people in your inner circle. Mm -hmm. There are unsafe people around you and energy is real. Yeah. You know, when you are operating with someone um, that is activating your energy mm -hmm. in ways that are non-productive and harmful for you, um, I think it's important to be willing to set the boundaries. Yeah. And, I, you know, I also sometimes I've gotten to the point where and it, it's to me, it's just been this kind of this cycle. And maybe it's just who who is running. But sometimes I associate, look, if you support this person or whatever. I just don't even see how I can, can continue on with this, you know, not that it's even a deep relationship, but just, I don't even feel like I need you around. And I just think that's kind of sad mm -hmm. because we want to be able to, to have different uh, viewpoints and about different policies or whatever. You don't want it to be just like a deal breaker, you know, of, you know, I'm not going to speak to you anymore, but that's what to me it's come to with a lot of, of people. So I just, you know, I like that. It's just, I like how you said you have to evaluate both of you said that evaluate the situation. Um, but what can you, what can you all both uh, suggest to do just for yourself mm -hmm. uh, to maintain your own, um, mental stability and just to to relax more in this this whole cycle that we're going through. Mm -hmm. to, uh, Tamika, what would you suggest? Yeah, I think one thing that's really key and critical, and um, you know, she started to hit on this, is the importance of psychological safety. That mm -hmm. we have to be places that we feel safe, whether we agree or disagree with people. Uh, because if we don't feel that psychological safety, 
then it's going to cause that angst for us. It's going to cause that anxiety. And so we have to do that, and we have to put our put ourselves in places that cause us to feel that way. Um, it also becomes key and critical. Sometimes, Pam, you just got to cut that TV off. You just <laughs> got to not even cut it on. Mm-hmm. You just don't don't even cut it on because you mm-hmm. know that it's going to get you worked up. You know that it's going to get you engrossed. And we think that social media is actually one of the things that's got us more hyped. But the reality is, historically looking at things, it's actually the news, 24-hour cable news stuff, is that started to help to get that that stuff going and get us going, even Mm -hmm. more than social media, uh, because the news needed to have something going on all the time. That's true. And so we got to, you know, sometimes we just got to cut stuff off. We got to take take that break. Mm-hmm. We got to go do stuff with our family and our friends and say, I'm not going to engage in this and, mm-hmm. and mean it, not just say it, but mean it and not not engage in it. Go get that massage. Go relax. <laughs> go do something for yourself. Go shopping. Whatever it is that is your thing that allows you to relax, we got to we got to do it and we got to do it for ourselves because that's when we talk about our mental health that's mm-hmm. what we need for our mental health we need to get our rest yeah because if we're not resting that gets us all worked up and even more mm-hmm. worked up as well so we yeah. really got to think and go back to the basics in terms of resting right eating right just those kinds of things exercising yeah. So that we are getting those anxieties out of us in a different way. Yeah. And then what 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 about you? You, you yeah. say the same thing. Well, my perspective is a little bit different, which uh-huh. is where my kind of four step model came from. Uh-huh. I think that it is um, scary to kind of put a blanket and kind of just turn the news off or uh-huh. just make sure you do this for some people uh-huh. that helps. But that's where I think it's so important to understand what is being triggered in you. Mm -hmm. And then what is it that you need in Mm -hmm. order to effectively cope? Because for the person who is watching the television, it overwhelms them to watch the news Mm -hmm. and it it heightens all their feelings. Yeah, turning it off. But for the person who really feels safety from being empowered with knowledge Mm -hmm. and I need to know what's going on versus I was at a conference and I missed a couple of days and all this Mm -hmm. is going on. And that brings me angst, Mm -hmm. not knowing. So creating a schedule where you're able to responsibly stay up on things. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Spending time with family, I think is great. Mm -hmm. What kind of family you got? You have a family that triggers and pokes and digs and likes to cause trauma and drama. Right. Which a lot of us do. (laughs) Being around them around this time may not be it. Do you have family that is supportive, nurturing? They also are looking for ways to be in a healthy Mm -hmm. space. Then I want to be around you. And so I think it really um, is determined by what is being triggered in you Mm -hmm. and what is it that you need to feel balanced. And we don't do enough of that. We Mm -hmm. do a lot of leaning to the six basic rules and do these things. And we never stop to say, but what's going on with me and what yeah. historically it's, helps it's more, me? So what you're saying is um, kind of almost what she, piggybacking on that, but maybe uh, meeting somewhere in the middle, you know, like maybe I should not watch as much news, but completely. And like you said, because for me, if I completely cut out the news that you're right, that would give me some anxiety because I would feel like, I'm missing out. I, I got to know what they said. Mm-hmm. However, I don't have to look at it all the, as soon as I come home mm-hmm. and during work, I'm looking and, you know, so, so right. There needs to be some, some more a meeting in the middle of, of both of those understanding, like you said, what is going to trigger, you know, what can trigger me? Certain things trigger me. Like when people say, what I consider to be stupid stuff, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. it's just like you, you feel like, or 
even sometimes I can overhear other people. It'd be their own conversation. Mm -hmm. I want to say something. I'm like, I feel like saying something. I'm not going to say mm -hmm. anything. I'm just going to sit here and be good. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I just, I'll just be glad when, I don't know, when this is over. But I don't know if it's going to really be over. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. So I think we need to prepare ourselves also for what could happen. Mm -hmm. You know, because November 5th, everything is just not going to be over with. Not at all. So I don't, I don't know. What do, you, what do you all think we should do in addition to what you all have said? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it is very contextually as you think about the context of the relationships and the things. And you think about the timing of things, because absolutely, wouldn't it be nice if on November 5th, everything went back to... <laughs> normal, mm -hmm. um, if there's such thing as normal. Um, and then thinking about even the location of where you are as you engage in these conversations, because sometimes it's just not the right place or the right time. Because if I get ready to get into a conversation with you, we don't really have time to talk through it. And it might even make things worse. So, you know, thinking about those kinds of things becomes key and critical as well. Um, it also making sure that we're considering and thinking about what's at stake, what's the, what's the cost of this conversation? What's the cost mm -hmm. of this interaction in terms of how I engage with this person moving forward, how important this person is in my life? Those things become and, and are very important as well as we think yeah. about it. And I think we also have to remember that there's not a one size fits all, that we mm -hmm. can't just do one thing to calm us down or to get us rid of angst, but that we might have to try a couple different things. And what works for me may not work for you and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, and really being willing to try a couple different things to say, okay, what what actually helps me the most? What relaxes me the yeah. most as I think about these things? And remembering and giving ourselves grace that yes. it, it may be that it relaxes us today, but tomorrow the same thing may not <laughs> relax us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think we still have to give other people grace as well. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think Absolutely. that, you know, and, and, and practice kindness. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important too. I think some... I think we've gone away from just being kind. Absolutely. You know, I think, you know, it, it, that's what, you know, being, it's nothing wrong with being a little bit politically correct. Either. <laughs> Still, it's like we've gone away from all of those things, mm -hmm. you know. And I think that that is a part of what makes this election season uh, just so contentious mm -hmm. with so much angst because it is really pulling off the mm -hmm. veil of a lot of things because before this, mm -hmm. you know, people were being very unkind. Mm -hmm. um, and now people are extremely yes. unkind. And we got a um, candidate who is very <laughs> unkind, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so it just just rips mm -hmm. the Band-Aid off. So things that we were kind of managing, yeah. you know, we talk about racial tensions yes. and things that were kind of being managed and now it's ripped off and there's black jobs and mm -hmm. there's, you know, it doesn't matter if this person is yeah. um, in the KKK. They are kind. They, they mm -hmm. are a, a, a fine human mm -hmm. being, too. And it rips the Band-Aid off of things that have already mm -hmm. been similar, right, right. you know, and and we got to look at that stuff, stuff mm -hmm. that we hadn't been looking at. We have been kind of able to mm -hmm. kind of coast through eyes and ears closed. La, la, la. Now it's mm -hmm. in your face yeah. um, and it's yeah. historical and it's entrenched, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why I think so many people feel fired up to their soul yes. because it is so deeply entrenched. Mm hmm. And that's the yeah, thing. Well, I think, in so many yeah. ways. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. Go I was ahead. just going to say, in, in so many ways, leaders have given people permission mm -hmm. to behave in these ways. Absolutely. And, and have role modeled that behavior. Absolutely. So it, it gives people signals and permission to say, "I too can respond this way. I mm -hmm. too can act this way." Mm -hmm. um, and it's okay to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So is are there any other things that you want to add, either one of you, to um, this whole 
way that we can or a strategy of dealing or maintaining your mental health. I know one thing I like listening to music. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I will say, you know what? I'm not going to listen to any news. I'm just going to listen to my music mm -hmm. and then I'll, I'll listen to that. Or I, you know, I have some certain TV shows that I like to look at. Mm -hmm. So I do that, but then I still find myself <laughs> going back, but I do feel a little bit better when I kind of disassociate myself from all of this that's going on. But, um, it's just, it's just to me, just, I don't know, it just feels so much different than other times when we've had election cycles. And like you said, it's, and like you said to me, it's like almost like permission is being given just to act in a way that we wouldn't even want our children to act. And so that's the thing that I think is also just so unusual that these are adult people who are just acting um, without kindness who are being just venomous mm -hmm. and people who you think would have enough education or, or culture to, to not act this way. I look at shows and I see people on round tables and saying things. And I'm like, how is it that you mm -hmm. got to this point in your life mm -hmm. and you're acting or treating people like this? So it's just, it's just sad yeah. to me. And it's scary too, because you have leaders, right, mm -hmm. that are misbehaving. But then, because permission was granted, now your coworkers mm -hmm. are misbehaving. Now your neighbors mm -hmm. are misbehaving. And so it really em does. And emboldenness yes. to, to really do what you normally would not have done. Absolutely. Or what you wanted to do. Yeah. And so it's unsettling, mm -hmm. right? Um, and just as a black woman, mm -hmm. it's unsettling because now I have to take a second look and say, right. you know, you're my colleague, mm -hmm. you're a non-black colleague. Do you believe this? Is mm -hmm. this what you feel? Am I safe? Right. You know, the, the, the parent at school wants my child to come over and do a birthday party at the house. Can I like, do that? Right. What do you believe? Or even just wearing T-shirts and buttons, you feel like maybe sh I shouldn't even wear this because there's somebody, you know, now you don't know even know if if you're going to be safe. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's one thing if somebody just were to say something like, oh, I'm not voting for him or I'm not voting for her. But now it's like what people feel emboldened to, to do things. So it's just, I don't know. It's, mm -hmm. it's just unsettling, mm -hmm. I guess is what yeah. it is. But I think it's revealing America. Yeah. And that's a that's a huge yeah. part of what's driving this. It's revealing what America mm -hmm. has not dealt with, mm -hmm. you know, has not gotten to the heart of it. Not that we haven't made progress. You know, mm -hmm. that's not it. Right. But there's still more progress that needs to be to had. Be right. And so it's being revealed. And what are we going to do about it? Mm -hmm. And so you ask the question, what do we do from here? Because November 5th is not going to be the hard mm -hmm. stop. Mm -mm. You know, and I think that one thing is there is healing and safety in being empowered mm -hmm. and using your gifts to do what it is that you can mm -hmm. do. You know, I always tell my children, whatever grade that you get in school, as long as you tried your hardest, mm -hmm. I'm good with that. Right. You come in here with a B and you did a half job. I got a problem. Mm -hmm. You come in here with a C and I saw your full effort. I feel good. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing about being empowered and doing what it is that you can. Right. And so moving forward, I think people need to really figure out um, what is it that I want, mm -hmm. you know, for my future, my family's future. Yeah. And what is my gift and how can I contribute? Mm. Because that empowerment helps you feel safe. Ooh, very good. Well, we're going to have to wrap up. So uh, Tamika, is there anything um, by way of closing that you want to add to anything that you just said? I would just say to people, you know, it's important for us to have open minds as we engage. I think it's important, as we said, to give each other grace, give mm -hmm. ourselves grace, give other people grace. Uh, give people the benefit of the doubt, but but at the same time, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them too. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, so we got to do that balancing act mm -hmm. on, on both sides of that, but um, making sure that you are positioning yourself and it's okay to put yourself in. I always say, know thyself is important so that I know when I need to put myself in time out. Like, I know when I need to pull myself out of discussions. I know when I need to separate because I'm about to get emotionally hijacked over something. Mm. So I need to step out the room 
and I need to go back. And we need to give ourselves permission to be able to have conversations with people later, that we don't have to have mm -hmm. it in that moment, mm -hmm. but that we can say, you know what? Not right now, because right this now. is the, the professional to me is not going to come out right now. So I need to step like out that. and I need to have time out and mm -hmm. then I need to come back to it and we need to engage in it later. So mm -hmm. making sure that we're giving ourselves permission and, and grace to be able to do that as oh, well. I like that. And and now and also with you, you want to have anything you want to say by way of closing? Yes. Just as far as how to care for our mental health, I just want to really reiterate that we are human beings. And so we are whole beings mm -hmm. and every aspect of our experience really dictates our mental health. And so, again, it is important to understand what is being triggered in you. Mm -hmm. You know, is it your issues mm -hmm. of not feeling safe as a child? Is it your issues and fears around not mm. being able to accomplish and capture your dreams? Mm. Is it your feelings of I have been mistreated and injustices have happened to me and I'm afraid that that's going to happen again, mm. right? For each mm. of us, there are very mm -hmm. different things mm -hmm. at the core of us that's being triggered. Right. And so don't just keep it at this surface level of what is it mm. about this election mm. season that is mm. no, nope, because it's always mm. it's, the trail goes back to something mm. deeper and be courageous enough to really do to that work, because then real healing, mm. real mental health stability and safety comes from that. So that's what oh I'm my goodness. Well, thank you both so much. I hope that uh, people who are wa who watch this segment will also be able to learn from it and to understand and to like you said, know their triggers or understand how to really just calm yourself down and say, you know, you know, I don't have to go there. I can just take a step back and understand what I need to do in order to maintain my mental stability during this time. But thank you all so very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And it was a pleasure to share the stage with you, Tamika. Gosh, you as well. Thank you. A great meeting you and thank you for a great conversation. All right, thank you. All right, Vanetta, did you hear that conversation? Excellent conversation okay. and gave me a little guidance. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Natalie just told me just to calm down. Yeah. Basically, <laughs> right. and, and your triggers, and, and, and it's definitely my trigger. Yes. And I'll tell you what, I even trigger myself a little more. I actually listen to people's conversation, oh, so yeah. I can stop doing that. Oh, you're not gonna stop, but no, <laughs> uh, but don't don't feel so emotionally invested in what other people are doing or feeling. And I think that's what I need to do. I have to understand that. And this is the democracy we live in. That's what makes it so wonderful. People do have a right they to do. have differing uh, opinions. But the problem, I think, is, is our association with that person and the person that they support. I think sometimes we think, OK, well, they must be like them. Right. Or, and know, I think at, at, at all that, costs, you will support this person. Yeah. You'll, you'll check your common sense and decency mm -hmm. at the door. That's where my concern yes. comes and how can I be your friend? How do you value me mm -hmm. when I know this candidate doesn't value mm -hmm. me? And right. What is your value? Yeah. Your surface value? And like, and like, um, like, uh, Dr. Uh, Taylor said, she said, sometimes you just have to evaluate that relationship. Is it something that you really feel that committed to? And, and, um, or, you know, sometimes you, you can feel like, you know, I don't really have to maintain this relationship, but we still have to treat people right. Right. And we still have to be kind to people and that. And I think that's what's For important. sure. That's why it must stay out of the workplace because yeah. the workplace right. makes it stay, very you difficult. Keep that out of the workplace. But I really enjoyed yeah. this conversation. If you enjoy watching the show, continue to follow us on Facebook as well as on YouTube. And if you cannot watch the show, listen on the go wherever you get your podcast. So until next time, I'll see you for another episode of Public Opinion. Bye. Bye-bye.